And we're live. Oh my. Yes, looks like our audio is coming through. Welcome, everyone, to the show. Despite what the title says here in Twitch, we're playing Crypt of the Devil Itch tonight. Continuing on, we're still on level one. Maybe we'll get through level one tonight. Uh, this is our third session of this. And uh, yeah, we're going to be doing that. Uh, we'll do a little recap here in a few. Uh, let's do some introductions. So just tell me who you are, who you're playing, and plug any pluggables that you might want to plug. Uh, we'll just go in order of the overlay, I guess I should say. I'm Chuck. I run the Defenders of Kobold. Find myself and pretty much all of these people here over there during the week. Uh, yeah. Bert. Yeah, I'm Bert. I'm playing Bjorn Battleborn, the Barbarian 15th level. Uh, yeah, fun guy. Uh, yeah, and uh, catch out my stream on twitch.tv slash murder, where we do lots and lots of old school and classic Dungeons and Dragons and other things here and there. Oh, you know, I just realized that um, I had been telling everyone that tomorrow night was Shadowrun. Nope. Uh, and it is not. <laughs> it is not. Be Gamma World tomorrow. Shadowrun the following week. There you go. Next up, we got us a Dan. Hey everybody, Dan with the Defenders of Cobalt, and my screen just went blank, so we'll see what that means. Okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm our Twilight Cleric, uh, and I'm not dead yet. You're a blind Twilight Cleric. I'm blind, apparently. but I'm not dead. There you go. Very cool. Over on the other side, up at the top, there's an Eddie. I'm an Eddie. Uh, I am Eddie, and I am uh, with the Defenders of Kobold, and I am playing the Knight, who is a variant feral tiefling. He's basically Batman, but on a really pissy day. Uh, and uh, he's he's fun. He's uh, He thinks he's a lot darker than he actually is. There's a lot of brooding going on, not a lot of action so far. Okay, that works. Moving on down, there's Jake. Well, I'm Jake. I'm with the Defenders of Cobalt as well. And I am playing Levi Fairhill, a uh, zealot barbarian slash cleric slash rogue who likes to break and enter into evil creatures' houses and then smite the crap out. Ah! Yes. <laughs> exactly. Refreshing. All right. Last but not least, hiding down in that bottom corner, who are you? Hi, I'm Jeremy. I'm a proudly adopted kobold, and I'm going to be playing Silas, a yuan T Echo Knight, who is neutral hungry and just a cheap and dirty bastard. Here we go. The best of the alignments. The best. Mm. Uh, is Dan just staying super still like that, looking all serious? <laughs> I think we might have lost Dan just a little bit. Well, That's all right. This gives me a moment for a screen cap. Yeah, I was going to say, everybody get your backgrounds ready. <laughs> yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. All right. Well, while Dan is lost in limbo, uh, we'll go ahead and, uh, you know, do a, you know, little recap. So, yeah, you all had received the rumors and the, you know, whatever they are, predictions, this, that, that, you know. Devil Itch was coming back. There goes Dan. Our overlay is going to be messed up for just a few. So hopefully Dan will come back and that will be better. Oh, and there Dan came back. Fortunately, my computer boots really fast. Okay. Uh, but it absolutely crashed. So, yeah. Okay. Well, we were just doing a recap. Uh, seeing is that now that your adrenaline is going and your frustrations are high. Give us a recap, Dan. Uh, we went <laughs> into a room and we did some things very, very slowly, like looked at some statues with nothing hidden in them and looked behind some statues with nothing hidden behind them. And then we found a room with some statues with some things hidden inside them. It was wasps. It was wasps. <laughs> Okay, you know, we could keep going on and on. You're exploring a dungeon, trying to get to the Devil Lich. 
Uh, pretty much where it went through, you found a room that's... Well, you fought a crazy vampire monk. You found a hidden entrance. You found a room that spun and had traps. You ended up then getting out of that and going into another room with a weird wall halfway through it. Ended up the floor was an illusion. And when you all dropped into the floor, illusionary copies of yourselves appeared and walked across the room and signaled for other people to come over. So there was like 20 Bjorns standing there at one point. Um, uh, what else? You made it over that. Then you made it to this giant room covered in doors with this big crystal with ground ruby hourglass. Couldn't figure it out. It teleported you back to the uh, round room. And uh, so then you found another exit from the round room where there was this creepy hallway full of statues that you all thoroughly investigated, and there's just yeah. absolutely nothing going on with those. Our recap started. <laughs> yeah. You made it past that. You found a library where you murdered the librarian and the evil monster living in there. You found some books. You found another room with a really creepy door. Went inside. Some, uh, they were actually like golem husks came out, and they threw oil at you. You fought them. Bjorn got trapped by a high-level old person and was just stuck there the entire time. Um, then you defeated the golems and the terrible wasp that came out of them. And that's where we're picking up. In that same room, the golem and the wasps are dead. Uh, quick recap here. There is a pedestal in the room. And standing on the top of the stone pedestal is a crystal orb. There is a throne set with gems and jewels, and hanging behind that is a tapestry. Uh, let me... No, oh, it's over here. No, that's the door. I want to show a quick picture of the handout as a refresher. Show players, show all. So yeah, that's kind of, you know, what it looks like with an eyeball on it uh so i'll let you all pick up what you want to do is there anything behind the tapestry do you want to go find out i mean i'm prepared to be disappointed so yeah okay absolutely let me double check something oh that's this level uh, so you move up, looking at this tapestry. Um, as you pull it beside, out from behind the chair, you're greeted by a um, ten-foot-wide, five-foot-deep cubby. Oh. And mounted in the cubby are two heavy crossbows pointed directly out towards the center of the room. Oh. Uh, so I'm about we, to be shot, aren't I? So we haven't activated whatever that trap is yet. Doesn't look like it. Uh, well, then it's a good time for me to move. Does somebody who knows to disarm traps want to disarm these traps? or? Uh, uh, I could take a stab at it with uh, thieves' tools and such. Sure. So yeah, the um, crossbows, heavy crossbows, both of them are loaded. Looks like there's something that would trigger them to go off. Um, they have bolts loaded into them. So if you want to roll... Uh, just, just a word to the wise, Silas, maybe get out from in front of them first. Yeah. Is this a sleight of hand check? Uh, that would be... Who are you? You're <clears throat> the knight. I work in too many systems. Let's take a look at your skills. Yeah, I've called sleight of hand. That's kind of our catch-all for thievery. So I think that's what's usually used for yeah. thieving. Yeah, if you want to go ahead and give that test. And explain to me how you're trying to disarm these as you roll it. Uh, so I would... Uh probably try and remove the bolts first so that if it does trigger and go off they don't fire sure 
Um, cause the way crossbows work, usually they're just kind of laid in there loosely. So, yeah. um, I would remove the bolts first and then, uh, just try and see if there's any way for me to, um, use maybe one of my tools or something like that to kind of hold in front of the, uh, the release. actual, uh, the re- well, not the release, but the actual string for it or whatever, so that I could gently release it and then lower the tension myself without sure. it just twanging. I give me that test. Oh, you did give me that test, and you knocked it out of the park. Yeah, you pull the two bolts off of the crossbow, and uh, yeah, you slip a piece of metal in there. You op it up off the catch. Uh, go ahead and give me a, an athletics test here. Because these are, you know, got quite a bit of weight on these strings. Oh, yeah, not a problem. Yeah, you're able to... It takes some some effort, some grunting, but you slowly release the tension on the bows. And, uh, yeah, you got two crossbow bolts. Can the crossbows themselves be dislodged from wherever they're mounted, or are they kind of attached pretty, um, pretty I'll heavily? tell you what, with that 27, I would let you dislodge those two crossbows, those heavy crossbows. Cool. Nice. Um, are there any other bolts there, or just the two that were loaded? Just the two. Just the two. Does anybody want a crossbow with a bolt? Kind of a one-time use. You walk in there with two heavy crossbows and two. yeah, there you go. So anyway, I started blasting. Right, actually, maybe. What's the damage on a heavy crossbow? Is it D10? Uh, we can look that up. Heavy I could crossbow. Actually maybe... uh, the details on that damage is a D10. Because I looked up my echo can. I can only do like reaction, like opportunity attacks with melee, but I can make it shoot. And that crossbow would actually not be bad damage. Okay. You wanna There you go. Give him give him a one shot crossbow. Interesting. Very cool. All right. So yeah. The tapestry is moved aside. Trap is disabled. Now there's just this crystal orb. You know, um, I don't remember the exact size. I'm going to say like uh, eight inches in diameter. Uh, no, we'll go with like 11 inches in diameter, a little larger, setting on this pedestal. Small so, bowling ball sized. Yeah. I assume there's nothing else in that cubby than the trap. No, just the trap. Okay. So probably something about this crystal orb sets that trap off, maybe removing it or something. Is it like set in it. It's just sat, just sitting there. Like a small depression on the top to keep it from rolling off, but it's just sitting there. Is it clear or is it dark? It's a opaque. It's a white crystal, like a giant ass pearl. I mean, I guess we could just pick it up. Sure, you want to go grab it? Anybody have detect magic? No, no. Uh, I have detect evil. Oh no, I have zero first level spell slots. So, <laughs> yeah, y'all might want to think about finding a place to take a long rest. I mean, honestly, that central chamber with uh, the, the rotating thing would have been a perfect place to take a rest. Okay. So, uh, Grimgar, are you going to grab that crystal orb? What do you guys think? Should I pick this up in case it's important? I mean, absolutely. It probably triggers the crossbows. It maybe triggers something else. So, yeah, let's just do it. Sure. So you walk up. Um, I'm gonna like crouch down and then like do one of these things where I'm just like trying to keep my face from yeah. the glass. That's not a problem. I'm gonna pull a Jeff and take your arms. Uh, go ahead and give me a wisdom save. I mean, I don't need arms. Uh, save. Nice. Oh yeah, not a problem. You can feel when you grab this thing, some magical effect tries to take over, uh, but you just shake it off. 
and you pick the orb up. And as you pick it up, you can feel a click come from underneath. And um, you figure that would have been what set off the crossbow. Nice. Uh, give me... Um, oh, give me a perception test, Dan. Perception. I think that's just a... There it is. Basically the same exact role. Oh. oh. Okay. Yeah, don't worry about it. You have a crystal orb. <laughs> I don't have any way to re-roll that either. Nope. Well, I what got do a crystal the, What orb. do the rest of us see when he picks up the orb? You don't see anything. He just picks up an orb. Yeah, he's got the orb. Dan, what are you doing with the orb? I'll put it in my bag because I have a crystal orb. Very cool. I mean, clearly, unless if I look into it, I, I feel something important happened, but... No. Yeah. Yeah, unless you want to give it to someone else to hold on to, but yeah, you can just put it in your bag, no problem. Yeah, I don't have a way to identify it, and apparently no one else does either, so... Fancy crystal ball for me to keep. Hey, Blizzard, it's normally I would offer to swallow it, but it's too much. <laughs> normally I'd say we should break it open to see what's inside. But, I don't think uh, this has candy in it for some reason. No, no, but maybe it has a shard of that sword we're looking for. I mean, I suspect we probably like, see it. No, it's not see through, it's opaque. Like. Hmm. Like I said, like a large pearl. Like it's this pearlescent oh. white all over it. I wonder if you can like hold it up to a torch, maybe and use that to see through it, or maybe uh, it, Levi's light spell. Maybe if we put light on one side, we can see through it. Yeah, I'll put my boot out so you can just sort of hold it over my boot and look into it. Uh, light does not make it through. Does not make it through. Okay. I need to actually look at our. Uh, our rumor again. Mm. It might be good to refresh, yes. Uh, I don't remember where we had that. Was that one of our handouts? Oh, I have no idea. You know how long ago that was? It's been forever. It was the one that told us where all the sword fragments were and something of oh. something place in the thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's approximately how it went. That was... I can find it. I know what you're talking about. Nope, it's not that one. I have three notebooks and can't find one of them. I will show it to everyone. There it is. There it is, yeah. So, rather than reading it quietly, one of you should read it out loud. I read it last time. The shards of true death are key, scattered about on levels three, encased in a crystal prison without a door, but only the first. There are five more. I hold the next shard of true death, but beware my fiery breath. This shard is as safe as can be, hidden behind the reverse of a party. Stuck fast is this shard. Removing it is tortuously hard. Beyond the constant crimson drips, cloaked in darkness, this shard sits. Lest all hope fades, guarded by gold, solve the riddle of swords, the last shard, behold. Crystal prison without a key. I'll bet it's in that orb. I mean, it, is, it does say cloaked in darkness, this shard sits. Can that light spell that you did, is that something you can do at will, or do you need to rest yourself to do it again? I can do it at will. Perhaps if it were cast upon this dark crystal, some sort Certainly. of, if it... Reach out and touch the crystal to cast light on it. Uh, you touch the crystal to cast light on it. The light crystal lights up. You don't see inside of All it. All right. This is why I was never sent to wizard school. Yeah, well, I dropped out of seminary pretty early on in my training, so. 
I cast light on my boots again. Until we know any better, in the bag it goes. Okay. Maybe later we'll crack it open. Hoping that there is some sort of treat inside. I mean, if you do want to just try and break it, I'm glad to have one of my doppelgangers do it and we can stand away at a distance. Mm -hmm. Perhaps not in this tiny room. No. So what's the plan? I think we're leaving. I think at this point we go back to the central room the uh you know spinning okay multi-doored room of choose your own adventure sure uh yeah and you understand how to work this room so you know i'm not gonna make you jump through hoops mm. uh pretty much you know that there's let me hoops to jump through yeah there's three possible hoops uh, let me make sure I get the right one. If I recall, we were just slowly busting the door down with the doors down with reckless abandon. So, yeah, the door on the bottom is uh, the broken door that you can easily get through. Mm -hmm. You've destroyed doors two, three. Um, and I think four, I don't remember. But anyway, if the room spins, you can get to any of the exits that you want. And I just, I don't want to spend a lot of time rehashing this. So where do you want to go? Or do you want to hole up here and take a long rest? I mean, I'm all right to go yet, but it's up to everybody else. Okay. If we so feeling to pretty healthy, rest. I could... Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, you can head back to the entrance, that cave. You can head to the room with the big floor and the darkness underneath. Or you can head back to the rooms that you just came from, with the library and the strange scry room. What do you want hmm. to do? Got ways we haven't been yet, right? That's what I'm saying. You've Ooh. got, you've managed. I'm just, I'm giving you this so we can mm -hmm. not tread a whole lot of time in something that you've discovered everything you need to. There's three ways out of this circular room. So, I wouldn't mind going back to that room with the uh, the hourglass in it. Okay, that would be through the room with the illusionary mm. floor. So yeah. If you want to do that, you get the room spinning. You leap out at the appropriate time. And you can make it back into this huge room. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, this dismal room before you, dimly lit by a glowing sphere in the center of the ceiling, 50 feet up. Uh, above the floor, there's a wall, some... 40 feet high that separates you from the eastern half of the room. Along the wall are several discarded devices that were obviously used to ascend the barrier. A rope, um, let's see, a rope ladder, and some climbing pittance. Um, but yeah, you know that if you step out more than 10 feet into this room, you'll fall through the fake floor. Do we have any any highly mobile people left that can Jeez. cheat us across this very easily? Um, how far do I need to get everybody? Um, let's see. That's going to be uh, about twenty five feet, twenty five feet across and forty feet up. Well, I mean, I could get a rope or a ladder or something there. That's not that hard. But you guys might have to do some climbing. Not sure I can carry you while moving. I mean, 
I think as long as we we have a reasonable way to get there, that's all that really matters. Yeah, rope and grappling hook. I can get it wherever you guys need it to go. Yeah. So long as we can make it to the climbing pittens, that's good enough for me. So okay. So how are you getting across this twenty-five foot gap of illusionary floor that drops into darkness? I'm just gonna fly. Okay. So I will uh, fly uh, at whatever angle gets me to the uh, top of this next bit. Yep. You're now setting on top of this 40 foot mm. tall wall. And I will set the uh, grappling hook and rope there. You know, I wonder. Um, oh, sorry. I was just going to say if we can tie off the other end of the rope, we might be able to make kind of like a reverse zip line, if that makes sense. You shimmy up. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. kind of like a, an angle. Top yeah, bottom. exactly. Just to avoid the floor entirely. So there was the door that you all entered through to get into this room. So if you could get a section of rope long enough, uh, 10, 20, 30, about 40 feet, uh, call it, uh, probably call it like 55 feet, including the angle. Yeah, I'm thinking if we had some pittons, which I think we do, we could uh, hammer one of those pittons in or a couple of them just for safety and tie off the other end of the rope. Yeah, and I can do my uh, like doppelganger swap levitate combo so I can kind of move along if we do that and kind of just levitate in place to kind of give people a helping hand as they move along. Yeah. Ooh, fancy. Okay, so the plan is the knight levitates up there sets the grappling hook. Do you all have 55 plus feet of rope? I've got 50 feet. I would imagine you do. So yeah, you tie your ropes together, you take it over to the door, you set a pitten in, tie it off against that. So you're all able to shimmy shimmy up, up this rope. As um, I'm shimmying up the rope, there is one thing I'd like to do. I'd like to take out my... Uh, steel mirror yeah and sort of hold it out to the side so i could see the floor below me yeah and i'm wondering if i can see past the illusion by doing this no hmm all right there was there was a part of me that wondered for a moment if perhaps that was the opposite of a party because it did create illusionary copies of you mm-hmm mm -hmm. i don't know I think it lines up more with the uh, what was it? Constant crimson drips. So. You're probably right. Basically, if I can't solve a problem by stabbing it or eating it, I'm really not very good at it. Well, I'm not either. I mean, let's be real here. We didn't come here to solve problems. We came here to be a problem. Or a problem. <laughs> I like you, Levi. Okay. I don't like that necklace, but I like you. <laughs> I appreciate your uh, economic ability of dealing with the bodies we leave behind. There we go. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you all shimmy up on top of the wall. You know that if you just drop down the other side, there's another section of false floor. So you can just take your grappling hook and lower it down and hop across. And you find yourselves back in the giant room. We are none the wiser of. I don't remember why we were drawing those shapes, so I'm going to get rid of them. And as soon as you step in, this crystal hourglass flips and starts counting down. Beyond the constant crimson drips cloaked in darkness, this shard sits. Oh, I bet the shard's down underneath the illusion. It says beyond it, though. Beyond the crimson drips. We had to come through this room to get to the other place, didn't we? No, you went through the false the, floor. You went through the false floor to get to this room. Yeah. Through the fl false floor room to get here. We're not beyond this room yet. Right. No, it was some sort of like timed room and we didn't figure out 
what to do. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So I'll give you a recap of this room. Finally, you pull open a wide door, stop short at the awe-inspiring sight before you. You stand in the open gates of a vast cathedral-like chamber, vaulted ceiling at least 100 feet high. The room is at least 1,000 feet wide. And you can tell from the sparkling torch sconces extending far, far into the distance that it's at least a thousand feet long. A brightly illuminated massive translucent hourglass seems to float in the midair just below the ceiling. Its crimson sands are falling. Uh, and then there's all of the doors surrounding this room. Um, I don't know what that link is, and I don't know who you are. Crash. And well, somebody um, deleted it. So. I got it. All right. And then each of these doors seem to be locked, and they each contain an odd keyhole that's carved directly into the center of each door. Keyhole, it's round orifice, about two inches in diameter, and it starts narrowing down after two inches, but extends like another six inches into the portal or into the door. Hmm. We are not smart enough for this room. We are very much team beef. So, what are you going to beef in here? Well, now we know that nothing terribly dangerous is going to happen to us. Do we want to start on like the far side of this room since it's beyond it? Or sure, I will do exactly that, and I will start sprinting across the room just as I did before. Sure. Uh, go ahead and give me a wisdom save, Jake. Okie dokie. Oh, wait, yeah, I remember some janky whispers earlier. Normal. Yeah, nothing happens. Yeah, yeah. You make it across the room. As you make it to the other side, you're greeted with more doors. Each door is absolutely identical. And you don't see anything else. Yeah, I'll shout, shout that uh, discovery to the others. Just more doors. Oh, good. Um, and the orb that you picked up is clearly the. You said that the holes for the door are only like a couple inches. Clearly, much bigger than the orb oh, yeah. he picked up. Two inches, okay. and then it narrows down about two inches, and then it extends about another six inches. Well, there's also there's an orb atop that's kind of lighting it. Does that orb look like it's a similar size to the one we took? Maybe we swap? No, it's a giant hourglass, crystal right? hourglass. I mean, we oh. talked about breaking this last time anyways. If this is all the same on every side, then... Chuck, uh, one of the doors, like, directly next to the entryway. Yeah. I would like to try and... I, I know they're kind of oddly shaped locks, but is there any way I can it. even try... Yeah. yeah, even attempt to pick it? Give me your, you know, your lock pick test. I just sleight of hand again? Yeah. Yeah, let's go sleight of hand... 19. Uh, no, you can't figure it out. Okay. I mean, if there's a thousand doors that are exactly the same. I remember who it was that climbed on top of the lockpicks before, or the hourglass before. Uh, that was Bert. Bert? And me. I flew up next to it. I didn't climb on it, but Bert climbed on it. I think you suggested breaking the dang thing. Let's just... Do it? I think I tried to break it. I, I don't think I was successful. Uh, yeah, that sounds familiar. Like it was magically protected or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, like I swung down at it to try and shatter the glass and it was just like bong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the other thing we've got that's different this time is the crystal ball we can't see inside. Uh, break it. Why not? At this point, I'll probably be running back towards the party. Okay. That's... 
let's crack it open and see what's inside. Maybe okay. it's full of chocolatey, nuggety goodness. What's the worst that could happen? Yeah. Uh, Dan, check your mic cable again. <clears throat> oh. Um, eh? Much better. Okay. I don't know what the deal is. Maybe my XLR cable is going bad. Yeah. Who's uh, who's breaking this crystal ball? So, uh, Grimgar, you produce it out of your bag. I have a Warhammer. That sounds like it's ideal for smashing a crystal ball. Sure. You set it on the ground and just take a swing? Sure. Yeah, just roll me an attack. You crack down on this crystal ball, and it shatters to pieces, and laying in its remains is the hilt of a sword. So the pommel Hooray! and the handle. Yeah! The that's what we thought was there was actually there. Uh, and so if we look at this again, this handout that I'm about to show isn't great because it shows the it broken. But oh. the, the uh, cross guard and the pommel are attached to each other. Does the uh, like pommel seem reminiscent of what would fit in one of these doors? Yeah, it looks like it might. So, hey, okay. yes, pick a door at random. Okay, you pick a door at random. What do you do? Jam it in there and give it a twist. You jam it, butt in first, give it a twist, and you can feel the door unlock. And the door swings open. Ooh. And beyond the door is an inky black void. Um, such that, like, light doesn't penetrate it, or... Nope. Do I try a different door? Yeah. Might as well. Let's try another one. Same yes. thing. Uh, do we just do we just go then? If every door is the same. There's a thousand doors in here. We could spend our whole lives opening these doors. Leave no hole unshoved. <laughs> Are you going to open every door? <laughs> I mean, is that what you want to do? <laughs> we could just start going and opening every door in the line. The hourglass is still counting down. Yeah. Why not? Okay. Uh, why don't each of you roll me a wisdom save? Mm -hmm. oh, that boy. doesn't sound fun. <laughs> okay. Grimgar, you rolled a 16. Uh, let's get everyone's wisdom save out there, and then I'll start making words. So the knight's got a 9. Bjorn's got a 20. Nice. Levi's got a 22. I think we're missing Silas. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm trying to get my... It froze up with me a bit. Oh. I can hit there the... we go. There you go. Okay, Was it, is it a magical effect? Um. Yeah, we'll go yeah. Okay. Still, even with advantage, okay. I roll an eight. All right, this is fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Uh, Grimgar, as you're working on unlocking <clears throat> doors, you feel an odd presence behind you, and it whispers into your ear. And this is going to be similar to some of you, but uh, Grimgar, only you hear this. Beware the raven's maw, for that matter, it's caw. Uh, okay. Bjorn. Chalicia's bane. Is true death. So that's what you hear, Bjorn. Uh, and let's say, Levi, uh, you would also hear Chalicia's Bane is true death. Chuck, is you said this is a magical effect? Yeah. Do you got advantage okay. on that? Is, I do as long as I'm within range of my imp, which I am. So you can roll it again roll if you want. More. Yeah. 16. 16. Uh, you also hear, beware the raven's maw. And for that matter, it's caw. Okay. Um, so the last few specks of sand or star, uh, rub crushed up ruby sand are starting to fall through the hourglass. 
Uh, you've got maybe half the doors on one side. All of them open up into inky blackness. Styles, can you send your little skin suit through there real quick? And, you know, depending on what happens, maybe we just all go in there. It looks like they're all the same. So as soon we'll as your exactly that. skin suit's out of sight, you don't get any feedback from it, do you? I So basically, I can create one that I can send out to a thousand feet away and still see in here. But to do that, I have to sit down my physical form in like a trance. Yeah. So I can't see or I can't see or feel anything locally, but I can still see and hear what it's doing up to a thousand feet away. Sure. So you pick a door and send your skin suit through. Mm-hmm. All right. Let me do something real quick. Your skin suit <clears throat> steps through, and you kind of slip into its senses. Um. You're in a different room. It's 30 feet wide by about 10 feet, or 30 feet long by about 10 feet. Uh, Haster Blaster, this is actually the fifth edition version of the Crypt of the Devil Lich. Um, when this comes out, uh, it was a Kickstarter. You'll be able to get it for DCC or fifth ed. Uh, but... You also see that attached to this room is a very long hallway with a... Well, I don't want to say it out loud yet, so I'm just going to show you directly, Jeremy. Oh my. I assume we just hear him say, oh my, and then we're like, mm hmm I'll start describing it. Oh there's a long hallway. There's a giant kneading figure holding something maybe a scroll i can't quite make it out i mean does it sound like the place we gotta go to then it's a place you haven't been yet it looks important you've well, got maybe 20 seconds left before the sand runs out shall we then i Run yes. step through the darkness okay you all run through the door pick up Silas and just haul him through with me. <laughs> and you are greeted to this room. Waiting for it to finish loading. While it is, I'll say some words at all of you. Oh, there it is. Oh, sure enough. Uh, so yeah, you're in a long, narrow hallway that stretches nearly 80 feet before you. The walls along the hallway are worn with age. The stone is rough and unfinished. The state of the hallway is a stark contrast to other parts of the tomb. Sludge seeps into the far end of the hallway through a spider web of cracks in the stone walls and ceiling, forming puddles in between the uneven floor tiles. The hallway smells faintly of perfume, and there's a large statue of a crouching figure at the end of the hall, nearly filling the entire corridor. The figure holds a gleaming shard of metal in its coarse hand. And that uh, bit of metal is almost given off a little bit of light, so I've kind of, on the map, you can see it at the far end, a little bit of light that it's reflecting back at you. What are these symbols on the floor here? Um, written in some language. What languages do you know how to to read? Biography. Let's see. Maybe that has all the, the normal ones. I could read Infernal. <laughs> uh, you can read Infernal. Yeah, I've got Thieves Can't, Common, Elvish, Infernal, and Dwarvish. Well, let's take a look. Um, no, no, where are we at? There we are. Ah, uh, it's always buried here in a wall of text. If I remember correctly, while I look up the specifics, it is written in Infernal. Uh, and it says... Now we gotta go up a little further. Thank you. 
Don't Burner. T E R N U R. Does that mean something? Turner. As you say it out loud, all of a sudden, Levi disappears. Frick. <laughs> Levi, <laughs> you find yourself back in the hourglass room <laughs> in front of the door you just walked through. <laughs> oh. The door is still open oh. in front of you, and the hourglass is reset. Oh, is it just... Oh, well, if the door is still open, I'm going to run back through as quick. All of a sudden, <laughs> Levi appears next to all of you again. Is it just the word return spelled backwards? Yeah, it's just return jumbled up. Like that. Yeah, that 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 will put us back out into the the hourglass room. I should. Uh... So yeah. now we know that. Yeah, but neither you nor I have actually told them what it says yet. Uh, no, Levi said it out loud uh, and then disappeared. Oh, that I guess that's true. You said it out loud. Uh, yeah, I didn't say anything. I was like, I'm gonna wait and see what happens. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. well, we know how to get out. <laughs> yeah. That's the door shuts, we'll be safe. So now we just got to figure out how to deal with this, what I presume is the hilt of the sword at the end of a uh, sludgy hallway. That's uh, a shard uh, of metal. You're all free to move your tokens. I would say let's send somebody expendable to go grab it, run back here like hell, and then say the word to get out of here. The Silas' okay. skin suit? Yeah. He won't he won't be able to grab anything, but I can send him forth to see if anything springs. That's a good he's idea. he's perfect trap bait. I can exactly. send him forward to see if anything springs. Sure. How Chuck, about how big is this metal shard? <clears throat> uh I don't know. It's way out there. You can't get a good judge on size. It looks like okay. it could be a size to be a piece of sword. So uh, I will ask you then, when you send your clone up there, uh, try and assess about how big and heavy it looks like this thing might be. This shiny metal bit. Because depending on how big and heavy it is, I might be able to send someone to go grab it. Oh, let me... oh your imp. Mm. Yeah, well, he can, he can shape change. Um, so, and if he shape changes into a raven, he's got a flying speed of 60, but I think he can only carry like five pounds or something. So it's, mm. it's pretty light. So the um, the token I just dropped is your meat suit there, Jeremy. Mm -hmm. uh, let me make sure you've got permissions. Yeah, you can move that. All right. I'll just have him march forward. As soon as your meat suit gets... Go back one tile for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> gets there. You can all hear the click and see it, the tile in that section depress. Hmm. But nothing seems to happen. Mm. Okay. I'll step him over to this one. <laughs> uh, it looks like this is one giant pressure plate that spans the entirety of the okay. hall. So let me go ahead and reveal that there. Okay. All right. So, I mean, for the most part, to avoid, like, painstakingly boringly watching the move yeah. one space at a time that is basically what i'll have him do it's just like okay do, 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 do. as soon as <clears throat> your meat suit gets right there mm -hmm. the floor drops out from underneath of them mm -hmm. and they disappear skewered okay i'll take a, a turn so to speak to kind of get myself together and if nobody objects, send forth another. <laughs> this is how uh, Super Meat Boy the game was born. So I will say, since you probably would have had sense on this, um, your meat, meat suit fell about 40 feet onto okay. spikes. Ouch. So there's a new meat suit. Okay. So I'll have him skirt to the left. Yeah, there's a very narrow pathway right there. 
Um, if your meat suit, can your meat suit roll like a, uh, an acrobatics test? Is it capable of doing that? It can't, or I can actually make it cause I can make it stand in the air if I want to, too. Okay. I'm just intentionally having it walk on things. Yeah. If I wanted to, I could make it like hover okay. over. I'm just saying this is a, a narrow ledge here. Mm. Um, so I just, if you want to make it shimmy over that ledge. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll just have it like kind of hover over. Like maybe tap its toes down on the little edge just to make sure nothing wicked happens. Sure. On the narrow ledge. I'll make a check for it gladly. Okay. But yeah, if you're floating, I won't worry about it. Yeah, uh, I'll float him over the pit and then have him go back to like stomping, yeah. obviously, to trigger terrible things. Uh your meat suit gets all the way down until about there. <clears throat> and then that statue at the end of the hall starts moving. And it, rather than reaching out for your meat suit, mm -hmm. it reaches its hands out against the walls and it just strikes down with its palms real hard. Ooh. As a shower of sparks flies out from between its palm and the wall, igniting all of this black fluid that's covering the floors and the walls. <laughs> as fire starts spreading. Uh, your meat suit's probably going to get burned up in this initial go of fire. Yep, it's got one hit point, so... Yep. As the golem seems to be kind of figuring out what's going on. It looks like it notices all of you down there. And it's going to start approaching. What do you all want to do? Uh, Actually, I think... Not go in the fire? This may be just a fantastic time. Let's just do this in initiative. That seems fair. <laughs> when in doubt, roll initiative. Yeah. at that. I got a nat 20 out of my initiative, but it's still a 19. Oh, man. <laughs> man, that golem. It's ready. Where is the darn initiative button? Uh, if you just click on the combat oh, no. tab. the For some reason, I, ro I rolled for the golem for some reason. <laughs> oh. There we go. What the oh, hell, hell did I yeah. get with the golem? Damn. And the rogues pull it out. And whip it around and then put it away again. Uh, so, Dan. No, I have the right initiative. That's right. Uh, what's your initiative supposed to be, Dan? Because I've well, got you down for a 17. Oh, no, never mind. Sorry. I, I just can't read. Okay. Levi, you're up. Oh, man. Right now, it's uh, from you to this golem. It's 80 feet. I want to <clears throat> I want to do a long jump over the pressure plates there. Okay. And I think I'm just going to try to move to the far end of this uh, the pit trap here. Okay. Um, it's about 20 feet across. I'm sorry, no, it's right. 10 feet across. Uh, can you long jump 10 feet, or do you need to give me an acrobatics test? Or actually acrobatics athletics. or athletics? There we go. Yeah. Oof. Mm. So you don't quite make you check it. Check out the rules for a long jump in here. Yeah, it's in there somewhere. You might look at it. Let's see. Yeah, that 13's not going to cut it, man. Oof. You jump and you catch yourself on the far side of the pit and you're just dangling there. Curses. So the night, you're up. Now Levi 
is hanging off the edge of the pit. Cool. Um, okay. How, Chuck, this is for a, uh, uh, how heavy is the thing in its hands? Is it more than five pounds? Uh, you're not sure. Crap. And you're quite a ways um, from it. Yeah, because I'm not sure how this spell works. What are you trying to do? Is it holding it? Is it holding the thing or is yeah. it? Okay. Catapult. I, I don't know how catapult works as far as. So it has to be an unheld item, if I'm correct. That's what I was wondering is I wasn't sure if it had to be something that was just like loose. Yeah, it's kind of like think similar to like whenever like a force user launches a piece of debris at somebody. Okay. Yeah, you can't you can't dislodge it from someone's grip. That would be like forcing it out of their hand. And mm-hmm. the range gotcha. is sixty feet on that. So where you're at right, now. Right, but I have a familiar who can. Well, I guess the familiar can't deliver that because that's a spell. So I would yeah, have to. Yeah, I'm going to say no. You won't be able to catapult that out of its hand. Yeah. So that was the piece I wasn't sure of is whether you could even attempt that for something that's held. Okay. Yeah. Um. I. God. What am I going to do? I don't even know what to do here. Um, could run up and try and save Levi. Uh, yeah, that is an option. <laughs> Not the one I want to do. No. <laughs> uh, I'm just hmm. screaming, hanging off the edge of this thing. But it's all, <laughs> it's all hate. <laughs> Um, first thing I'm going to do is yell at Levi. Levi, just say the damn word. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. All right. Um, and then I'm going to... Uh, what's the range on this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a good range. Um, I'll just crack off uh, an Eldridge Blast at this thing. All right, go ahead. If you want to hit attack, that nine does not hit. <laughs> now you're a high level, so you should get multiple hits with your Eldritch Blast. Three beams. Uh, well, but Eldritch Blast comes from. Uh, uh, I took that from my Warlock, I believe. Oh, oh so you're a level and not a level. Okay. Okay. I'm only I'm but, only level one Warlock. But your Eldritch Blast is based off your total level. Yeah. So oh, is that's it? That's why that's why Warlock is such an awesome dip class. So you just get Eldritch Ooh. Blast. So yeah, and you then... got three beams with that. I got three? Oh, yeah. well then, yeah. hell with that. Let's do that again. No. That's another nine. No, don't do it right. one, exactly at the one, same, I one guess. One more. A 14. Still a miss. <laughs> All right, well, I'm a great pyrotechnic show, but I'm pretty useless at ranged uh, attacks with this, apparently. I will reiterate to Levi. Levi, I did what I could. Yell the magic word. Okay. It's this thing's turn. It's going to move. Uh, Let's double check that. Oh, my light didn't move with it. That's fine. It's going to move right there as it starts walking towards all of you. Now, as it steps off its original position, those of you down at the entrance hear another click as all of a sudden the section of ceiling right above that pressure plate collapses, blocking the hallway with debris. It looks like you can probably dig through it, but it's going to take some work. Um, About five rounds to clear enough rubble so you can make it through. So Levi's all by himself? Yep. That's great. That's great. That means I can just do this all by myself and be a big damn hero. Silas, you're up. Is it enough that it completely <laughs> obscures our vision? Or Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we can't see Levi at all? No. Uh, 
you'll just have to judge what's going on by his screams of pain. Yeah, I mean, if I could even see even a smidge through, I'd be able to help you. But um, I'll tell you what, if you spend a turn digging, I'll say you can clear out enough where you can just get like a keyhole to look through. Yeah, I'll, I'll just start helping with the digging because once I can clear line of sight, I'll be able to do some chicanery. But until we can see you, okay. can't do much. Sorry. Grimgar? Well, I guess I'm just going to try and use my dwarven proficiency with mason tools and attempt to start clearing this. You start clearing. Mm. Bjorn? I guess I'll help. Okay. Yeah. Levi? Well, first things first, I want to climb up and out of this pit. Uh, sure. Um, go ahead. Is and this give uh, me... slick enough to where? Yeah. Uh, give me an athletics test. <clears throat> Because there is that oil all over it. Yeah. And the fire is still spreading. Ooh. Is the fire behind the golem or yeah. ahead of it? Okay. Behind. So let me get you a line here. Right now, fire's like... Oh. Like right there where that blue line is. So you climb up. Up here. Yep. At 18, okay. that's right. exactly what I needed. I am going to... Now, is it still holding the metal in its hand? Yeah. I'm going to run up to it and try to disarm it then. Okay. So, how the heck does disarm <laughs> work? That sounds fantastic. Ooh, that is ballsy. <laughs> he may be a big damn hero if he pulls this off. If you hit, if you pull this off and show and just pop into existence behind us carrying that's that, exactly right. the plan. <laughs> awesome. Uh, disarming. Let's look at that because I don't remember that rule. I know there's a battlemaster fighter maneuver for it. Yeah, I don't think maybe I can't do that. I'm not seeing it. I'm not either. I think you have to have something. <laughs> yeah. It's specifically called a disarming attack that fighters yeah. have. I mean, you can try and grapple it. See if you can grapple it. You know, if you can get it grappled this round. Yeah, the hell with it. Next round, if you I'll... still have it grappled, I'll let you try again to pull it out of its hand. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll just fly into a rage and grapple it. Nice. Get sure. advantage. So here we go. Ooh, yeah. Oh my. Okay. I'm going to roll one of its slam attacks because it's the same stat. Oh, oh, unbelievable. Oh my gosh. So yeah, you try and grapple this thing and nothing happens. Curses. Anything else? That's, that's all I get. Okay. No, that's all I get. Okay. The knights, do you continue with the digging? Sure. Okay. Jake. <laughs> Bring it. This thing tries to grapple you. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Make yourself look bigger. It works on bears. <laughs> All right. I got a 28. Oh, Lordy. Come on, Rage. Ooh. I'll tell you what. On a tie, I'll give it to you. So oh, man. it tries to <laughs> grapple you. On failing to do so, it's got this weird energy that it radiates out at you. Uh, go ahead and give me a wisdom save. Don't forget you have advantage on it. That's true. Yeah, no problem. As you can feel, whatever this magical effect uh, does not work. Silas, okay. I'll say you <clears throat> move just enough rubble that you can get just the thinnest line of sight <clears throat> through. So I can, uh, if I put my, I can manifest my skin clone up to 30 feet away from me, which means I could create it just on the other side of the pit. Sure. And then I can spend my bonus action to swap places with it. Sure. And then I will... 
trying to, where did, sorry. I suddenly lost where I am. You're, I moved you, you're up there. Okay. Oh, I think I clipped through the wall. That might be what Oh, okay. It. And then I'll use, so that's my, my bonus to swap with him. And then I'll use my movement to get, well, I'm not sure why I won't let me move myself. Won't it let you move yourself? That's a great question. It, I would move up and to the right by one. Up and to the right by one, right there. So that I'm I'm within ten feet of that sucker, and I will start smacking at him. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So do you? Twenty-seven, 27 is it? I'll just go ahead and roll. I'm sure this thing can take a few attacks. I'll just go ahead and roll the. So 27. 16 is a miss. 18 is a miss. Okay. Uh, we did do a short rest, didn't we? I have no idea. I don't think you did. Uh, we did one, maybe? Did you? Okay. I'll, if, yeah, okay. I can say we did. In, in, in I think library. you did. Yeah. In the library. I think we did on the first time we left the uh, hourglass room. Okay. If we're thinking we're going to do a long rest soon, I will use some stuff. I'll use Unleash Incarnation. I'll use one of those, which basically I can do it a number of times of my constitution bows to do an extra attack. So I've had one hit so far. Okay. 20 is a hit. Okay, then I'll action surge. Okay. So I've got two hits. 21 is a hit. Three hits. 20 is also a hit. Four hits. And then I will, because this is a second attack action, I'll use another unleash incarnation to make another attack. Twenty-eight. That's Ooh. a critical hit. Hell yeah! So five hits with the fifth nice. being a crit, and because that fifth was a crit, it will have disadvantage on all attacks for the next round. Wow. Okay. Nice. Because of uh, my slashing feet. Cool. You want to put some damage out there? I will. Okay. So four regulars. So normal. Oh. Normal one. Normal two. Normal three. Get it popped back up here. Come on now. Sorry. Normal four. And then crit five. Jeez. Okay. I can't do it often, but that's a I monumental can, amount of damage. I yeah, he can go Nova once in a while. And when you're doing it with damage. a monument, yeah. That is 128. 128 damage. That's okay. crazy. It's still up. So I was like, are we going to rest soon? Because I can't do this again. Oh, Your attack okay. damage uh, tickles my network engineer sensibilities. All Don't right. Anything else? A 128 bit attack. Nice. Mm. Grimgar. Keep digging? I mean, yeah. I got my mason's tools. Bjorn, keep digging. I, mean, I can't do anything otherwise. Okay, so. Bert, digging. Yeah, I just try to get it done fast. Yeah, yeah. Levi, you're up. Uh, just a second. It's clobbering time. Yeah, it is. It's clobbering time. I'm gonna go. Let's see, Silas is not within five feet of it, is he? No, he's got no. reach on. Yeah, I got a reach weapon, so I stayed 10 feet away. That makes sense. And that's perfectly fine. Uh, I will just attack with my whip from melee range. Sure. Wait a minute. How do I... Uh... What's going on? You can click attack. Okay, so this was not count as a strength. That's right. It's, oh, baby. Yeah. That works just fine. Uh, critical though. hit. 
And I've also got an extra attack, so I'm just going to go ahead and make that attack as well. 20 is a hit. 20? Nice. Oh, hell yeah. In that case, uh, normal damage okay. would be 9, uh, slashing slash magical, and um, critical hit. 13 slashing slash magical. Okay. Hell yeah. Uh, you all have turned a very bad situation into a not so bad situation. Yeah, and um also I God, what was it I had? Um You've also got your so crazy um one D six plus half your level and also your sneak attack. No, I don't got my sneak attack on this because I don't uh You're attacking with advantage. No, this is a dexterity weapon, unfortunately. So um, Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Uh, disadvantages to using a whip. Where is my darn? Uh, I knew I. Oh, but I do have my divine fury here. Mm -hmm. So, while I'm raging, first creature I hit on each of my turns with a weapon takes one d six plus six extra radiant damage. So, there's that. Hell there's yeah. 13. Team beef. Yeah. Oh. Okay. The our, knights, puzzle, our puzzle solving skills are like eh. <laughs> I'll tell you what um, the knight Grimgar and Bjorn uh, at the end of this round I'll say you break through the wall uh, so now we'll just go to the flint golem who's very much not happy um, so it's gonna do some punching so I need to roll a d6. Okay. Oh no, it's clobbering time. Um, all right. So Levi. A disadvantage on its attack for what it's oh, worth. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> all of its attacks. Okay, does 12 hit? God no. Yes. So <laughs> it's gonna bust out that magical effect again. Uh so Silas. And Levi, make me a wisdom save. This is against a magical I'll, effect. I'll do that real quick because he did attack somebody other than me. Oh wow! I'm I'm gonna smack him. Sure. Twenty-five is it? Nine damage. Oof. No, that's my wisdom saving throw. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> a fail. All right, you want a twenty-two damage? Dear. Then I'll do my saving throw real quick. Stylus, you pass. Levi, you don't. Uh, Levi, you are now slowed. Um, let's see. You As if I was going to run from this thing. Yeah, you cannot use reactions. Your speed is halved. And you cannot make more than one attack on your turn. In addition, you can either take an action or a bonus action, but not both. This will last for a minute, but you can repeat this save at the end of each of your turns. Silas, you're up. <laughs> Okay, well, I think I would like to continue this process. I'm not going to be able to quite repeat what happened last time, but it's to do okay. Okay, we got that's a miss, I'm sure. That is a miss. There's a hit. That is a hit. That is a hit. It's a hit. And. Yeah, I feel I feel okay. Okay, you want to give me those two damages? I will. So that will make it easier. One and two. Okay, that is what fifty-one. <clears throat> um, yep. you kill this thing. Hell yeah! Awesome. Basically, just waiting till the right the moment where like wow. you've got it tangled, like one of its arms is tangled in your whip. Just yeah. shove the spear into its side, create a clone on the opposite side of it to pull the spear even further around. Nice. Uh, yeah, it collapses. It lets go of that shard in its hand. And sure enough, it looks like another one of those shards. Or it looks like a shard to the sword. So you've now got the, the grip to it and one of the shards. Uh, the, those of you back, you clear the hallway. You're able to rejoin your friends. The hallway is still burning. 
and the smoke is starting to fill up in it. I was going to grab the shard and say, Termer. Nothing happens. Oh, shit. That's not good. I suppose this is where we help with the digging. <clears throat> Dig faster! Yeah, you all make it through. You work together. It's not a problem. Maybe you have to say it over here or dork. Mm. If I go berserk, can I dig harder? Yes, you dig absolutely harder. can. <laughs> Power digging. Uh, I'll, I'll shout to, to Levi, throw the shard over. <coughs> yeah, I'll, uh, I'll kind of motion for them to, you know, step aside and then... <laughs> Whip it. It's a good idea because it is a sharpened piece of metal. Uh, uh, yeah. So yeah, you have uh, two pieces of the sword. Nice, fantastic. So I'll hold on to that uh, shard and then look around to everybody else and just say, "I can survive through fire just fine." I I, I could just... half survive through fire just fine. <laughs> I don't want to be cooked. I want to cook others. There you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm on the other side of the room, so I'll try to say in the word. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Where's your token? Uh, yeah, nothing happens. Okay. Maybe you have to actually be standing on Maybe you the have to words. Actually, be on the words. Let's yeah. try that. Okay. So if you move your token, whoever's moving their token. With someone else's I, idea first, but if nobody's doing it, then I won't. I can't. I would volunteer, but I can't move my token for some reason. Oh, yeah. So you move back there. You say the words, and you teleport back to the other room. Okay. Neat. Okay. There we go. Okay. So does this mean we probably have to do something in that strange shadow floor room? To get a third piece, the sword is somewhat incomplete, right? <clears throat> I'll go ahead and step on uh, on the scribbled lettering on the floor and say the word as well to leave sure. with the shard. You teleport back. Silas, so if you could uh, meet Suit to the other end of that pit and put a pitten in the floor, I'd much appreciate it. Did we check what's behind the golem yet? Fire? <laughs> if you all give this, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, it'll eventually burn itself out. Mm -hmm. So what do you want to do? I wouldn't mind uh, exploring behind where the golem once was. I mean, okay. I figured out how the, the teleport deal works, so I'll just come back. Okay. Makes sense. Better to be thorough. So yeah, if you all wait a little while, the fire burns itself out. And then, um... You want to do any exploring in this room? Jake, you said you're going to head to the far side. We're not under duress at the moment, so okay. I'll say you can easily make it to the other side. It's the wall behind it looks solid. There's a gross stuff that was seeping through that's burnt off. The hall still has some really kind of foul smelling smoke in the air, but other than kind of burning your eyes a little bit and a cough, it doesn't seem to be doing any real damage to you. Yeah, I'll kind of scrape my boot around to see if there's any goodies in here that survived the fire, or maybe a secret door or some. Do you such. want to give me a perception test? Sure. Bing, bang, boom. Nice. Uh, uh, you don't find anything down there, and you feel very confident about that. Yeah. I mean, I'll probably start on the side that we're on. Sure. Hmm and start working towards the other end. Okay, give me another perception test. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you don't find anything. You feel very confident about that. 
Hmm. So the shard chuck is given off a faint glow. Is that right? It, I, it, has it was it was glimmering. It. The 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 book was unsure. I'm gonna say once you get it in your hand, it seems just like a piece of metal from a sword. So no. Uh, okay, gotcha. So, hmm. ideas. anything of anything of note fall from the uh, flint golem other than the sword shard? Whole. Let me double check, but I'm pretty sure it's just a whole bunch of flint mm. and that shard. I strongly suspect whatever thing was burning of some of you in the darkness may hold another shard. Ah, in the uh, in the trap room with the fake floor. Mm-hmm. Could be. It sounds like Silas is doing some heavy thinking. Silas, why don't you give me a wisdom test? Do do do. A wisdom check. Uh, Save. Let me double check. Um. <laughs> wisdom, just a regular old wisdom. Just test. ability check. Just okay. An ability test. Sometimes me think good, sometimes no. Yeah, that's not <laughs> enough. Thought you were having a thought, but it turned out to just be your recipe for meatballs. It's a good mm. recipe. Smelling all like the fire and the smoke has just got me thinking about. Like I, I really regret that we didn't carry that monk with us to cook up <laughs> the leftovers. I mean, I've never heard I, vanquished foes referred to as leftovers. I'm still a little puzzled by this panel originally clicking and doing nothing. Um, so I'll give it to you. It was it was like a two part trap. Mm. This was the first thing you had to set, and then the golem was on the other one. So by activating this first panel. Once the golem stepped off the other one, it triggered the cave in. So if you would have skipped that, the cave in would have not happened. Mm. Well, shall we look at our our poem again real quick and see if we think of anything of it? Let's see. There was the crystal ball, crystal prison without a door. Mm hmm. I hold the next shard of true death, but beware my fiery breath. I think that's what we just dealt with. Seems likely. Now, next is this shard is as safe as can be hidden behind the reverse of a party. Do we need to look at the wall behind where we came in? Well, there was a room with the group of statues looking at each other across which, and then which there was we also the searched, we searched the ever living daylights out of the room with right. the statues in it you're muted Bert we searched it but we did not break it, it like shattered ah. the wall <laughs> it's safe as can be you can't, you can't get safer than no door yeah it could be bricked up Um, I feel like there's got to be something stupid because th- now these are like lining up real close and short. If the golem was the fiery breath. Mm-hmm. There's another one beyond consecrated drips. Part of me thinks that perhaps the first one is the thing that was within the darkness that is encased in a crystal prison without a door <coughs> because a crystal reflects you know what it was creating copies of you I don't know I'm not a goddamn wizard all right well we find out whatever's down there and, uh, whatever Probably. it was that was brushing up against us and burning us if it's alive it I'll may be my... a dumb thing to ask have we looked in the spike pit too no, I was more concerned with getting out. Might just take a peek at it. 
So looking <clears throat> down, it's forty feet down. Um. Uh, let's see. Um. You do see stuff down there. I'm trying to find the listing. Mm, sounds so, yeah, like time to... If you hold some light down, you can look. You can see all the spikes pointing up. Mm -hmm. um, down there, you can see some bones. Looks like skeletal remains. Mm. Um, you can see some shiny bits. Looks like maybe some loot, maybe some gems. Uh, there's a shield down there. You can see what looks like some armor. Uh, Sounds a, like time. Hmm. You can see a short sword down there. <laughs> Sounds like time to put some uh, levitation to work. Just get on down just above the spikes and maybe fish some stuff out. Yeah. Has so anybody got that? Or I'll I'll be you, willing to do, do it. I guess. <laughs> <clears throat> Like I could create an echo just above the points the of the spikes, swap, levitate. That's kind of neat. And then just, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then just create a new echo back up, swap. So I did. I missed something important. There was something else on that golem. Mm. Inscribed oh. on its chest was a message. So I'll say Silas uh, and uh, Levi, you would have been close enough to be able to read it. Mm. That's what it said. Deep down below, only she will show. Look away from the cursed dawn for the path to move on. What was that again? Uh, it's in the chat. Deep mm. down below, only she will show. Look away from the cursed dawn for the path to move on. Deep Cursed. down below. There's your false floor. Mm -hmm. Nonsense, I'm sure. So, Silas, are you sending your clone down? Yes. Okay. Looking down, I mean, you can see what I told you. There's a... Mm -hmm. Looks like you see four rubies down there, a shield, a chain shirt. Looks like a, a fan, like a fold-up fan, like a, a mm -hmm. and a short sword. And it looks like there's a wand down there as well. Um, but if you're looking for clues or any signs of way through, I would need a wisdom test. I mean, Silas just thought he was grabbing loot, but he'll... Oh, okay. I, can make... I thought you were going down there to look. Okay. If you want to grab loot, I mean, that's fine, too. I can make an ability check. Sure. I mean, that was be perception. Oh, no. yeah. it's, oh, perception? Okay. Perception. There do better are. than I do. Because, <laughs> I mean, he is you know neutral hungry and vaguely greedy he's looking to see if there's any like little things stuck in a crevice so looking around you do see that these spikes all have this like slimy green coating on all of them probably mm. guessing poison of some kind but you do see one spike that doesn't seem to have the poison coating on it and the top of the spike is bent at like a 45 degree angle maybe like six inches down That seems weird. Maybe it needs some uh, kajiggering. Well, so first things first, I'm going to kind of do the little chicanery to kind of like create double, teleport up, make sure we get all of the treasure out of here. Yeah. And then at that point, just kind of like, because it's like 40 feet down, I create my doppelganger like 30 feet down and then have him like prod at this weird bent thing with his uh, glaive. Mm. 
So I'm just going to drop. I'm not going to make you all identify. This isn't a long running campaign. So here in the chat and foundry, there's what you find. That's the loot you pull up. Um, so explain to me how this prodding is going. Oh, basically the the glaive has a ten foot reach, so I'll basically create the the echo within ten feet of it. Yeah. And initially, he's just kind of putting the tip of the glaive to this thing that maybe is more of a tooth, or he suspects that it's some weird, crazy thing that wants to eat you when you're at the bottom. Yeah. And just kind of like pressing up against it, assuming it's some sort of tooth to see if something like unfurls and snatches at it like a predator. So nothing unfurls or snatches. When you do push it, it's just got the slightest bit of wiggle. Okay, I'll kind of push back and forth and see if I can finagle it loose. Uh, it, <coughs> it doesn't feel like this spike is coming loose, but it, it does just still get a little bit of wiggle. I, I'm, not, I'm not cowardly by any means, but I don't feel like going down in there to like grab it by hand. Does anybody else have any great thoughts about this thing? Throw some string or a rope around it and we'll yank it from up above. Use my whip. It's magically enhanced. There you, there you go. Enhanced for added flavor. Enhanced. That's a great idea. So, yeah, you tie some rope around it, start pulling. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't give. Um, in fact, it's at that 45 degree angle. So after a couple hard tugs, it would just slide off. Hmm. We may just have to go down there and like do something with it. How? Where is this particular spike chuck? Is it right in the middle or something? Uh, it's you know off to the side in the middle, just a little bit. I mean, like how far from one of the edges of the of that space uh, is it? I don't know, maybe a foot or so. Oh, because you can walk. Oh, yeah, yes. I can just walk on flat surfaces. So I'll just fucking walk down the side of this pit to like and reach that thing. Sure, you walk down there so you can reach it. You can reach out and grab it. Yeah, and then I just want to try and throw it as if it's a lever, see if it moves in one particular direction. Mm. You start, it doesn't feel like it's a lever. It's got no side to side movement. Okay, I walk back out of the pit. Does, does it push yeah. down? Has nobody pushed down on it yet? Oh, yeah, I didn't think of that. There's, there's other directions. So, yeah, you head back down there. Maybe, maybe push twist it down. It. Nothing happens when you push it down. Twist it, bop it, pull it, push it. What happens if I try and twist it? It Take rotates. It. And eventually it clicks as a secret door right next to where you're standing opens up. Ooh. Uh, I don't know why this isn't working, so I'm just going to do that. At the mm -hmm. bottom of this pit, you see a door opens to a hallway. Hey There's a door, guys. I love it. So now what? Well, let's put a rope down there and let's try not to fall. Yeah, if, if they want to, if they want to drop down a rope or something, I'll I'll lower it down right in front of the entrance to this hallway. Okay. Yeah, you all can get a rope. You tie it off with your grappling hook or a pitten or something like that. And you're all able to shimmy down and enter into this <coughs> hallway. Nice. Super cool. Okay, so now we get to switch maps again. You all make it into this hallway. <coughs> Are we supposed to see all these freaky boys at the end of the hall? Yeah, I'm getting ready to make some words, so it'll explain everything. <laughs> so on oh, no. opening this door, you see a hallway that continues on. <clears throat> 
Eventually it opens up into a vaulted hall about 40 feet wide, 50 feet long, with a vaulted ceiling above. The hallway is dimly lit by flickering candles hanging on the walls. At the far end of the room are four statues, each about 12 feet tall, uh, situated behind a black altar. Ten shadowy forms flit before tediously decorated the tediously decorated black glossy altar, chanting in harmony as a central figure raises his hands towards the ceiling. He wears a shiny suit of plate armor adorned with a pure white tabard displaying a golden set of justice scales entwined with ivy. His face is shriveled and taut against the bones. His eyes burn with a crimson glow. Tattered patches of hair hang down from his exposed skull. He sneers, displaying rotted teeth as he measures your group. The apparitions cease their praise and start gliding towards you. I'm going to stealth. <laughs> <laughs> stealth? <laughs> Uh, I will do the opposite of stealth and just ah at the yeah. well, <laughs> echo in front. Uh, yeah, Eddie, I'm just gonna I'll tell poof. you what, if you yeah. want to try your stealth, go ahead and roll it. Everyone else, it's a great time to roll initiative. Oh boy. Oh my god, look at all those twenties. I don't feel that good is about a this. Near a near perfect roll on my stealth. <laughs> oh, I have a picture to show all of you too. We skeletons. <clears throat> well, th this is this is great. Okay. Oh my. Oh my. So we got our initiative in, right? Hmm. It's like Eddie, you're the only one I'm missing. Oh, right, because I was going into stealth. Um, yeah, if you want me to roll it, I'll go ahead and roll it. Yep, I'll need you to... Okay. Still and I rolled abysmal, so it's a good thing I'm stealth. <laughs> you did great on that stealth. Okay. As this starts up. Um, this is going to be great. As this one moves off as this one moves off uh, let's see here okay this is going to be fun um, Dan, all of a sudden, all of you standing next to Grimgar, Grimgar flies up off of the floor and smashes into the ceiling. You're muted, Dan. I am, but it doesn't change the fact that I don't want this. Um... I did not consent. I, I did, did not, not consent. consent. Okay, and you are pinned against the ceiling. Oh. Well, that seems like an unpleasant place to be. Yeah. No damage or anything? Nope. Just unpleasant? Just pinned against the ceiling. I can... Uh, you know what? I'm glad you reminded me. Yeah, there is actually fall damage on this. I haven't fallen yet, have I? Yeah, you fell towards the ceiling. Oh. <laughs> Oh. 14 fall damage. Okay. Tough times we live in when you fall towards the ceiling. I'm just, you know, maybe it's some kind of reverse gravity effect. Oh, that's beer, Jeremy. I thought you were, like, Levi. tipping Worcestershire sauce into something. Well, you know. I mean, that's how you spice up anything. Yeah. Mm. I mean, we mm. all have our rituals. Like, if I have to fight undead, I drink, you know, weird shit. Like Bloody right. Marys. Levi, what do you got? I'm going to rush out ahead of everybody else. 
screaming bloody murder. Now this guy, uh, the 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 head honcho up at the top, which column is he in? Um, I'll tell you what to make. Put him right there. All right. In that case, I'm going to draw that wand of lightning bolts I got from an earlier one and cast that at third level at him. Fantastic. Sounds great. So, so uh, there we go. You'll have to make a DC 15. Him and everybody in that 100 foot line will have to make a DC 15 dexterity save. Ooh. Yep, give me just a second. I'll have them do that. Nice. What's that save again? It's a dexterity it's save? Zoobity boop. That's right. So he got an eight. Seventeen. Fifteen. What was the target? Fifteen. Okay. So the boss fails. The boss is going to take 30 lightning damage. Mm -hmm. And uh, the others will take 15. Okay. Nothing seems to happen when it hits them. And if there are any flammable objects in between, in within that line, they will also catch fire. Sure. Nothing so long really as they're not happens. being worn or carried. Yeah, okay. Mm. Well, at least, uh, at least we know that ain't going to do much. Bjorn. The robes are asbestos. <laughs> Mm -mm. I have little toys for them. So, Bert, what do you got? Um, is the scale correct? Are they like eighty feet away? Yeah. Well, can't get you. Um, charge in fifth edition doesn't. It just allows you to move twice. You just have to move a certain amount, and then you hit. It doesn't double your move or anything. So you can give up your action to move, so you could double move, basically. And you, as a barbarian, you have 40 at this right. point, so you could yeah. do 40 and 40 and move 80. But then I couldn't attack at the end, though. No, because you'd be yeah. giving up your action to do the second move. Oh, but I could do something cool, because I've got something that just takes a reaction. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to do my full move and crash into them. Um, I'm going to rage, uh, which is free. I just got to do it. And then as I crash into them, now that I'm raging, my primal ability allows me to do a lightning strike with knockback or knockdown. Sure. Yeah, let me get here. Raging storm. So I'll say as soon as you uh, kind of enter the threshold of this room, mm -hmm. you can feel a very uneasy kind of energy in the air. Uh, but yeah, okay. go ahead and give me whatever you got there. Um, sorry, I've got to look it up. It's such That's a fine. lot of stuff here. Um, okay, so must make a strength saving throw on a fail save. The creature is not prone as it's struck by a wave, and they're going to take damage too. Um, what kind of damage is this going to be? It's electrical. Okay. Is it like magical and... It's lightning, okay. <laughs> essentially. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I guess it would be magical. It's... Um, okay. It's... I mean, it's lightning. It doesn't say it's magical or not. Okay. Yeah, it's it's still magic. Okay. okay. So, what was that um, save? Also, they got a it's a strength save. So I'm gonna guess you knock them on their butt. And then they're gonna take. Oh, man, sorry, you just slow everything down. So Okay, so one target can get hit by a thunderbolt. Um, 
Yeah, I'm sorry. I, right. I can't Thunder. find the damage. Thunderbolt is... That's a cantrip. Uh, that's a D8. Okay. Uh, I'll just roll a D8 here. So I'll tell you this. You feel probably the impact. Probably just this one. Just probably that one right there to my right. Okay. You were in his space. So I'm just saying you knocked him yeah. prone right there. Mm -hmm. Your physical connection hit. You knocked him down. But it just seems like that your your thunderbolt that came out, your electrical damage, it didn't seem to do anything. Okay. Okay. The one in front of you, uh, since you're there... Uh, it's going to, it's going to give you an attack. What kind of attack? Um, mm -hmm. it's going to be a one. draining attack. Is it magic? Um, you know, it doesn't specify. I don't see how it couldn't. Cause I'm a mage slayer. If so, he's within five feet of me, I get to react with an attack as that goes off. Yeah, I'm going to let you react. I just need to figure out if this does any damage and what damage it does. So go ahead and do your attack. Okay. Come on. So, 38. <laughs> Good God. Okay. Wow. <laughs> so, I'm going to say it hits you. Well, I don't even know if it hits you. Does a 19 even hit you? Um, it does. I'm only in okay. 18. Actually, no. It Well, no, it does. I, okay. I get a plus one. It's a 19, but it still okay. hits me. Uh, so, yeah, you... You're going to take 14 points of damage from this for the attack. Is it magical, though? Do, do we no, know? No, this is melee. Okay. Uh, there is a magical effect, but it doesn't seem to actually do anything. Okay. So, yeah, just 14 regular damage, but you attack back with that 38. That's one hell of a hit. Yeah, absolutely, that hits. So, do you... Wouldn't you win on a tie if it matches your AC, Bert? It hits I, I don't know. at your AC. So if your AC is yeah, 19 okay. and I get a 19 to hit, that's a hit. It has gotcha. to meet okay. or exceed. Uh, that wasn't a crit, was it? That's just a regular? That would just be a regular. As awesome as that roll is. 17 points of damage, though. Okay. Yeah, you kill it. Just outright you kill this thing. Yeah. Okay. Die, mage! Uh, this one, I took correspondence courses for this! This one is going to move up in its spot, and it's going to do the same thing. He went uh, to this is a, I can school. keep doing this, Chuck. It's not a... It's not just a once thing. I can keep doing this. Okay. Well, if they're within five feet of me, oh, I can keep doing it. It's you only get though. one reaction, though. Oh, okay, okay. That's... okay. It rolled a nine, though, so it's a miss. All right. This one comes up here. This one's gonna... You know what? It's gonna flank you, Bjorn. Oh, man. 16. That's gonna be a miss. Yeah. Uh, this one's gonna come over here. Boss man. Oh my gosh. What is the boss man gonna do? Boss man, mm -hmm. I'm together with your plan. <laughs> Let's so see. Away. Gosh, I'm uselessly far away. Yeah, you are. So I'll tell you what he's going to do. He's going to cast a spell at you, Bjorn. Ah, he casts at disadvantage as well. That sounds great. 
that's my spell. That's my spell shield. Okay. He cast heal on you. Interesting. <laughs> uh, let's see. That's sixty feet. So heal doesn't actually have a two hit. Hmm. Uh, let's see. I'm going to say you're going to get a, if you want to resist, resist this, I'm going to give you a save on it. So if you want to make okay. me a, um, and alternately I have advantage in all saves versus yeah. spells. Yeah. This would be a constitution save. Yep. I would resist simply because I think they're all enemies. I mean, even if it seems to be helpful, I would yeah. think I would no, resist. No, absolutely. That sounds great. So. Saving throw with advantage. Constitution. So this is going to be an 8 plus 7 plus 6. i got to figure out what this save is. They don't have 8. 21 is an 8, 7, 6. 21. So you match the save. Um, so it's going to be half of what you would usually get with your save. Uh, mm -hmm. So you take 45 points of damage. Oof. I'm sorry, that's not right. 35 points of damage. Even that was heal? Yep. This, like, it was some crazy opposites. I mean, just the way they swept, swapped gravity, maybe it's, like, crazy opposite mm. world here. Uh, the Bizarro one, healing. Yeah, the one right next to you, Bjorn, is going to attack. Mm -hmm. uh, I clicked <clears> the wrong thing. It's this. 19 to hit. Yeah, it equals. Uh, yeah, that's just a be, it's a melee attack. Yeah, melee attack, okay. fourteen damage, and then there's a magical effect you can feel that tries to kick in. Mm -hmm. um, actually, it heals you for three points. So then I take a net eleven. So you took thirty-five. Uh, yeah, net eleven. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> The night. Okay. You're up. I'm doing good. <laughs> uh, how tall is the ceiling, Chuck, in this hallway? Uh, it was enough to deal Dan 14 fall damage. So it's 40 feet up. Cool. I'm going to uh, go ahead and use my action as well to move double. So I'm sure. going to go 40 up. And one, two, three, four, 20 down the hallway. So sure. 60 total. So I'm on the ceiling now. I'm yeah. still stealth, I assume. Yeah. Still hiding. But I am making my way down the hallway now. Making your way downtown, walking mm -hmm. fast. Yep. You betcha. Okay, so go and move your token where you're going to be. I have done so. Okay, cool. Anything else? Uh, not at the moment, no. All right. The one that's prone uses its movement to stand up. And it attacks you, uh, Bjorn. Uh, that's a miss. Grimgar, you're up. Uh, you can attempt to break free from the ceiling. Can uh, I just act natural on the ceiling? Or like, is this like where I'm unpleasantly like stuck to the ceiling? Unpleasantly. Or well, you know what? No, you could stand up and walk on the ceiling. Okay. Stand um, down. Can I just like take a quick look around? Now that I'm in Bizarro Land, make sure there's not like something funny behind us up here or something like that. You look around. The only funny stuff are all of these creatures. The four statues, the black altar. Okay. Um, I guess I'll move 30 feet forward then. Okay. Uh, let me see where that is. Right next to Levi. Yep. Um, do I have range? I should have range. Uh, I might try and sacred flame this guy here. Sure. We'll see what it do. Uh, 
Uh, they gotta make a dexterity save. They fail. Hey, yeah. Your sacred flame week. hits. Nothing seems to happen, though. <clears throat> Everything is opposite. So Radiant won't hurt them, but perhaps Necrotic will. Right, which I have none of. But, you know, I will this proved the point. Following up on what Silas just said, dude did cast heal, and it did hurt. Yeah. Everything seems quite backwards. Silas, you're up. Which I'll just relay that further. Well, seeing the strange things that have happened in Grimgar, I feel I would like to elect to maintain my levitation so I don't need to worry about crazy gravity effects. Okay. Um, and I'll move myself. 9, 10, 15, 20. I'll move myself up a spell and then I'll create my echo. Let me see how far I can put him out. I can. How are you? How is Bjorn looking? Oh, he's pretty bad. <laughs> oh, yeah. 55 okay. out of 170. The real problem is that why I cast healing on him now. You just I can put him. my echo just uh, basically to flank the guy to the south of Bjorn. Sure. Uh, let me get your meat suit out. <clears throat> there you go. All right, and then I'll start going to work trying to help Bjorn out. Okay. All right, and attack number one, attack number two, and attack number three. Uh, let's see. 24, 19, 15. Last one does not hit. The others do. Okay. Well, that's not bad. Get that pulled back up here. So do 26. You kill it. And 23. You extra kill it. Okay. Well, I've got a reach of 10, so I could reach one of the others then. Sure. I'll let you carry it over. Okay. And the nice thing is, uh, does 23, like, I'll, I'll go to the right. I'll hit the one up and to the right with the 23. Yeah. Is it still up after 23? No. Excellent. Well, with great weapon mastery, if I kill somebody, I can take a bonus action for an extra attack. So I'll go to the left. And 16 will probably miss. Um, Yeah. But so I will say, in this room, you feel a very odd sensation. Mm. And the 16 here really highlights that your weapon feels wrong. Like it's not doing what it's supposed to do. It's not quite hidden. <coughs> in fact, you can almost feel like your weapon's maybe working against you a little bit. Okay. Well, I'm a I'm a simple man or simple I'm a simple lizard. I'll I'll just keep working at it. Okay. Anything else? Hmm. Nope. That's pretty much everything I could do. That was move, attacks, bonus. That's it. All right. At the top of the order. Um. This one's gonna come up to your meat suit. Make an attack. Ooh, critical fail. Hooray! This one's going to come up to... Except in Bizarro Land, the critical one is a nat 20. Whoa! Uh, <laughs> that one, would be crazy. <laughs> it's actually going to go up to <clears throat> Bjorn and keep working on Bjorn. So, Bjorn, this is a 17 to hit. That's going to be Misses. a miss. Yeah. Nice, because Bjorn's within five feet of me. Ooh. I'll use my Sentinel. Does 19 hit? 19 does hit. I'll do 26 damage. Oh, you take it out, man. Stop hitting my friend. Wait. Get rid of her corpse. I can only do that once. Still. Okay. Dan. 
You fall from the ceiling. Take another 14 points of fall damage. This is, this is great. I don't know who cursed me. The dead one. I curse him back, but he's already dead. Okay. Um, this one is going to move up to your meat suit. There's Silas. Crit. Oh, meat suit's dead. Yep. Oh no. Meat suit is dead. I'm just going to move meat suit back here. Meat suit's out. Because that would be 28 damage. Oh yeah, it's got one hit point. The it's they're one hit wonders. Okay, Levi. I mean, this is probably one of the most useful things in the game so far. Yeah, it just, it takes hits. So even if it only has one hit point, that's a hit somebody else didn't take. Yeah. I am going to move there. Sure. <clears throat> Same I thing. I will fly into a rage and attack uh, the one on the right with my reach whip. Sure. And you definitely, you feel this very odd, heavy energy coming from the room. Yeah. Increase my number of rages here. Attacking the one on the right. Ooh, ah. Uh, yeah. This one or that one? Oh, no. Uh, that one? That one. That cool. one, yeah. 25 is a hit. So I'm going to deal the damage. Boom. And then my uh, Divine Fury damage as well. Hell yeah. Okay, it's still up. Well, then I'm going to try to hit it again. In fact, it attack. didn't seem to do any damage. Huh. Well then, fuck the whip for the second attack. I'm going to pull out so, uh, yeah. I'm going to pull radiant. out a potion of greater healing and throw it at the guy as if Ooh. it were a flask of holy water. Ooh, please roll that healing. Be, uh, one, two, three, four. And I'll need you to make me four. a, Ranged a weapon throw attack, test. Right? So it'll be yeah. d D20 proficiency modifier plus your strength modifier. See, I think I have one of those. Uh, yeah, hand axe. I'll just yep, roll, that just roll that for the attack. Yeah. 18's a hit. 18. Okay. And then roll that healing damage for me. Where is that? Uh... Okay. I was suspicious. Uh, 11 do what healing. you want it to do. You heal it to death. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh. Okay. Hmm. Bjorn, you're up. Did, did the one seem to be affected by the lightning strike or not? No. Okay. So from what I can tell with the rage, it doesn't say seem to say that I'm unthinking. I just can't cast spells. Mm -hmm. So can I do something clever while raging or sure. not? Yeah, you just can't cast spells. What do you got? Whip out my bag of holding and just... Shove the guy in it. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, make me an attack roll. That's awesome. Is he going to go into the bag of holding or just get launched like a cannon out of it? He's going to be put into it, and he has enough air for uh, 10 minutes minus the number of people in there, which hopefully will soon become very crowded. I do want to point out yeah, that yeah. these things do not look like they're alive. Oh, well, either way, Still <laughs> I can't the get field. out of the bag unless I pull them out. Yeah. <laughs> so go ahead. Make your attack. Just regular uh, I'm not sure how strength that... based attack. Just roll me a strength test. Okay. Um, it's actually going to be at a plus three now because I'm raging as well. Sure. Just roll it. Okay. Actually, it's a, with advantage because I'm raging. Oh, you crit well. that. You're not do better get than any a crit. better. Yeah. I'll tell you what. I'm going to let you one up. That is a crit. Somehow you manage to sweep it and you scoop up both of them. Okay. That's amazing. All right. Uh, <laughs> and the other thing did seem to work. So with my uh, 
my other ability I'm going to be able to do, I'm going to make that one make a strength check just to, to stay on his feet or knock him over. Sure. Now that the knocking over, yeah. So yeah, if you want. Yeah. So I I have actually two things. I can do a lightning strike, which is actually three d six damage, or which will also knock them on their feet, or I can just knock them on the feet with like okay. a concussive wave. So I'm doing that. I'm not okay. doing damage, just knocking them. Well, it's a strength they uh, test. Messed up their save, so they are absolutely okay. knocked down. Cool. Okay. Anything else? Uh, that's all I can do. Okay. And this one is going to move up to Levi. Uh, no. Eight's not going to hit. This one is going to move up to Levi. Thirteen? Okay. All right. What do we got here? Rather than attacking, this boss guy turns to two of the statues off to his side and activates them as mm. they join the combat. As this one now gets a turn. It moves up to Bjorn. Um... Uh, that's oh, not right. <laughs> no, wow. That is not well, right. 65, you know, as this is normal. Yeah, if these guys have a 65 strength mod, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> GG. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, um. I was mute. I was like, does this plus 65 hit? Uh, that is actually going to be an eight to hit, which yeah, is a miss. Yes. Yeah, I need to fix that. Uh, the knight, you're up. All right. Um, seeing as how I am still staying uh, in the shadows here, I am just going to, let's see, that's, nope, that's the wrong uh, thing. I'm down here. Uh, let's see here. I need to, sorry, I need to okay. measure 40 and 20. Okay. Uh, there we go. I'm staying on the ceiling, staying hidden, and I have doubled my movement. Uh, that's all I can do. Okay. Uh, same thing. As you move past the threshold into this room, you feel that very intense energy uh, passing us over to Grimgar. I, I guess since my magic is pretty useless here... Well, maybe it's not. Let's. I was going to do something dumb here. No, I don't want to do this. Let's not do this. Sorry. Yes, you do. You whatever I'm that just, dumb thing is, you're going to do. I'm. I'm just going to attack him. I was about to do something that would heal people, and I'm like, this is probably going to heal, hurt, everyone in my party. Oh yeah, I wonder how temp HP works in this room. I don't know. Yeah, oh, that gosh. would. I, yeah, now I see what you were thinking. Oh, giving temp HP, I would make that hurt you. Yeah. yeah, I was like, no, uh, no, you make it permanent. Permanent hurt. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, yeah, you just permanently steal his maximum hit points. I was <laughs> like, I thought about this because it's temp HP. It's not healing, but no, no, I shouldn't. Yeah, in this room, that might be dangerous. Cast uh, it on and, the boss. <laughs> and I'm at one of my attack, so I'm just Danning it up here. Okay, good I'll job. Just, Oh, that's true. Yeah, just cast some like super healing spell on the boss. That is a fun idea. Silas, you're up. He, he's been out of range <clears throat> until like now ish. Okay, so I'm one. 
Hey, let me actually. Oh, he's still think. out of range. I could. I'm so five, far. I could create my echo to be just. Yeah, I'll scoop myself up here. I'll create my echo just south of Bjorn. Okay. Now I think Mitsu was down below, right? Yeah, let me start moving him up. Yeah, I just Sorry. you uh, he died, so I just put the token there. So okay, I found him. I'm moving him up. Okay, so I'll create him up there because Bjorn indicated he was looking a little rough. I'll continue to try and assist him. I will. <clears throat> I'll smack at the. Actually, isn't there a uh, dude who's down on the ground? What do you mean? Uh, isn't the, the okay. I, there's like a dude with a fall token? Uh, yeah, that one right there. The dance. Okay, penguin. what do? Actually, I will attack him first. Sure. Because if I can kill him, I'll get a bonus attack from Great Weapon Mastery. Nice. So twenty-two hit him. Absolutely, it does. Is 20 enough to take him out? It absolutely is. Nice. nice. Okay. So then I'll turn around and start attacking at the statue. And I'll have three because I got the kill on the one guy. So one. Uh, and who's that against this big guy? This statue guy, yeah. Uh, that's a miss. Two. Three. Oh, my gosh. All misses. Um... He does not want to be hurted. He does not. I'll use one more of my Unleash incarnations to try and do something here. Maybe a 21 will hit? Uh, that is going to be a hit. Okay. I will hit him for 25. Ooh, yeah, that hurts. Still up, but that hurts. Okay, there we go. That's it for me. Cool. Uh, the other one is going to move up to the front of Bjorn. And it is going to make an attack against Bjorn. Um, I'm not going to do that because we don't need to see that big old number because it's not right. Ooh, I'm doing bad. It misses. I'm being the jerk that I am because it attacks somebody other than me and Bjorn's within five feet. Absolutely. I'll miss horribly, but I'll try to swing at it. Okay. Taking us back to the top. It's down. Okay. Bjorn, all of a sudden, you're thrown up against the ceiling. You take 14 points of fall damage. That would be considered. Would that be considered bludgeoning? Because yeah. I'm resistant. Mm -hmm. It absolutely so seven. would. Okay. Seven fall damage. I feel remarkably useless in this room. Levi, you're up. Okay. Um. Never let this read. Uh, I'm going to use my zealous presence. Okay. Uh, everybody that I, uh, up to 10 other creatures of my choice within 60 feet of me. So basically everybody in my party. You know what? Hmm. Oh my gosh. This so is, we could get I, advantage on multiple attack rolls? Yeah. Oh yeah. Although I don't know if zealous presence counts as a magical effect. What does it do? No. It gives advantage. Um, I unleash a battle cry, and it gives other people advantage. So it seems more like a what can say a that personality magic. altering action, basically. Okay, are you going to do it? Yes. Cool. Would, Everyone, we'll you have advantage, as the spell says. Yes. Okay. And We're then I really will uh, move. For you to say we all have disadvantage now. <laughs> Yeah, see, I was wondering if it was actually a magical effect, I would have cast it on all the enemies. Give them all disadvantage. <laughs> okay. uh, anything else? So I'm going to move. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to move. That's a bonus action. So I'm going to move five feet that away, probably provoking opportunity attacks. Yes, you will. Uh, 
Nope. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Suck it. All right. So there's five feet, 10, 15. So another opportunity attack. Eighteen, still, still a miss. Okay. Twenty, twenty-five, thirty, and because I'm a barbarian, thirty-five, forty. Ooh, yeah. Wow. So from here, I'm going to draw my second potion, yeah. and then use it as a weapon against him. Yeah. Okay. Oh gosh, where is my hand axe again? There we go. So that'll this will count as the attack roll. Twenty two. Twenty two is a hit. To deal thirteen healing to him. You injure him for thirteen. Amazing. That's awesome. And then for my second attack, I'm just going to uh I'm going for my second attack. I'm going to do something um, unorthodox. I'm going to reach out and lovingly stroke his face. 26 is a hit. You want to give me damage <laughs> for that? Sure. Reach out and touch face. <laughs> All right. You offend him into oblivion. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's deeply confused. This is I suppose this would count as psychic damage. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> Let's take a look here. That's so fun. I really like that. The boss is going to need therapy after this. <laughs> Even if he wins, he's like, I I just don't know who I am anymore. Your punch <laughs> doesn't tries to comfort me do in battle. Anything. Okay. <clears throat> Still fun, though. Yeah. It was very fun. Uh, Bjorn, you're on the ceiling. You can stand up and walk ceiling. around. How big are these statue things? 12 feet. Then I can attack it from the ceiling, then, can't I? Uh, you're 40 feet up. So oh, 40 feet yeah. up. Just uh, throw your weapon down at it. <laughs> oh, no. I'm going to walk over so that I'm above him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, easily. Yeah, and then I'm gonna <laughs> hurl my axe down. <laughs> Absolutely. I was gonna say you should just <laughs> you should wait until uh, wait till gravity reverses again and just land on. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and make that attack. All right, so here we go. There's that. Uh, here is the attack. So you're attacking with your warhammer. With advantage of that. Wow. Well, either way, I'm pretty sure that hits. Yeah, that's you, you might get a crit. Yeah, you can yeah, if you get a critical. Is that is that a crit or not a crit? That's not a crit. Oh, no, you said I should roll because I might get a crit. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. there's always yeah. a chance. Oh. Oh. Critical failure, wrong direction. Oh. Wrong well, yeah. Unfortunately, you get to choose between the two. Yeah, so so yeah, so yeah thirty nine. Yeah. Give me that damage. It's incredible that it's still twenty one. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's he's nuts. got like what the storm giant strength belt yeah. or something. It's yeah. nineteen points of damage. Okay. Mm. I am also going to direct my lightning bolt down on him, which is three d six. for another 12 points of damage. So, the 19 damage hurt very much. Uh, the 12 points of damage seemed to recover him a little bit. Ah. Uh, mm. Oh, he does need to make a strength save. To see if he's not Absolutely. His... He is not very strengthful. Oh yeah, he's prone. Sure. So I'm just I'm gonna move your token to the side. We're still you're right above sure, him. Yeah. Yep. Uh yeah, he's prone. Okay. Next up. Uh this one is gonna go towards the meat suit. Is 
an 18 hit. Actually misses. Nice. Just barely. And the other one is just going to stay right here and it's going to attack Grimgar. So Grimgar, mm -hmm. six misses. It does. Okay. <laughs> Moss guy knows he's in trouble. He stands up. Uh, and then Jake, he's going to heal you. Oh, boy. Oh, no. So you make me that constitution save. You need to hit a 21. Mm. Oh, unbelievable. You take 70 points of healing damage. My God. Ooh -wee. Oh, my God. Uh, and then he's kind of boxed in there. Um, this statue is going to move up to the meat suit. Uh, that's right. I need to roll here. 15 does not hit the meat suit. It doesn't. Go meat suit. Go meat suit. Go. The knights, you're up. <sighs> I'm really curious if doing necrotic damage is going to heal someone, but I really don't want to like stab somebody and then. <laughs> Yeah, from what we've seen, probably doing necrotic damage is a bad idea because we've specifically seen healing hurt them. It's a pretty fair guess. Well, like healing hurts us and hurt them. So, ah. Well, but that's what I mean. I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about one of you guys. Yeah. Well, ah, kind of, oh, God. If it healed you, that'd be amazing. But if Only it doesn't heal you, I've just stabbed way. my teammate. Just stab somebody <laughs> with that super necrotic knife. Only one, only one healing way them not. by backstabbing them. <laughs> I'm helping. I'm helping. <laughs> There's only one way to know. Although so far melee damage is still damage. And that's how acupuncture was invented. <laughs> yes, but only, but only, but only a single D4 plus a plus a modifier is is actually like that's piercing cool. damage on my neck. The rest of it is all necrotic. So what are you gonna do? <laughs> There's only uh, one way to battle. Sneak attack your friends. only one way. <laughs> sneak attack. <laughs> oh, this has turned into a game of Munchkin. Um, let's see here. Well, first and foremost, I'll move. So two, two, move right there. And then... Uh, who's hurt the least? Levi, you're not hurt. Well, you just took 70. Bjorn and Levi are both hurt. Fairly I'm hurt badly, badly, but if this doesn't play through, I could still take some more damage. Yeah, Bjorn's at 48, <laughs> Levi's at 56. Uh, let's see here. My modifier. Yeah, all right. Let's do this. Um, <laughs> I'm going to... Am I close enough? Should be. Oh, yeah, I'm close enough. I'm close enough. All right. <sighs> so since I can communicate telepathically, um, I'm going to tell Levi telepathically Surprise. since I'm hidden. Uh, if this doesn't go right, just know that I meant the best. And then I'm going to throw my ritual knife at him. <laughs> Go ahead. And see what happens. Make with that advantage. <laughs> Make that attack with roll advantage. with advantage. <laughs> okay. That is a 23. What's your AC? That was a hit. 21. Uh, that's a miss. Okay. What? What? Is it? Is no, that's a magic. That 20, 23 is a, is, is a miss on a 21. On. Let me check. I was thinking it's of someone else's weapon. Do you get any attack bonus, magical attack bonus with that knife? Yeah, I think uh, we're basically getting a negative, what would normally be a positive for the magical on our weapons. Uh, so that oh, would well, actually, no, that would For hit. the attack? Yeah, you're Yeah, good. for the attack roll, it's just my dex bonus and stuff, so. Okay. Okay, so then damage. Uh, normal. Okay, so that's going to be one piercing. 
Uh, plus, let's see, one piercing. The one piercing and so 21 necrotic. 10, 10 piercing, oh, 10. 12 necrotic. Oh, so no. 12 of that is necrotic. Uh, Jake, 10 piercing, 12 necrotic. You gain one no, hit point. And you only take <laughs> half. He only takes half the damage from the piercing. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I get I get six hit points. There you go. Go me. <laughs> well, I found an incredibly inefficient way <laughs> to try and help. So I mean, uh, with my uh, yeah, with my bonus action, I will go ahead and hide again. Sure. Go ahead and roll that. 34 for stealth. Sure. There you are. You're up. Gosh, there's this guy in front of me that I'd really like to not be there anymore. So I'm going to try and attack him one more time. Sure. I can't believe that worked. <laughs> I mean... I have such a well, fun idea now that you've done that. Um, I did it, guys. That's a mess. Yep. Ugh. Anything else? Even with advantage. Uh, no. Silas, you're being, up. Being a cleric is pretty limiting in this room. I mean, you could heal him and do a ton of damage. Just upcast and heal spell. I know, but I used my action. Oh, I, I only get an action. Well, I meant as an alternative because heal automatically yeah. hits versus you have to make an attack roll. Yeah, I'm. I'm just. I have very few spell slots, and I'd like to use them for actually healing us. Yeah. Oh no, I understand. Um, hmm. Let's see, what do I want to do? Am I better off? <clears throat> Five, ten. Figured 15, with advantage, 20. maybe I could hit him this time. Ten. I rolled a six and a one. Okay. So I could move myself five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. I could get myself up to there. And then I could recreate my meat suit, or basically just, yeah, I'll just recreate him on, next to the. So that would be on dude. top of that altar. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. I'll just have him just kind of floating in the air nearby, and <coughs> let the uh, let the meat suit go to town. Okay, please do. I will. Okay, so advantage on these. I can't wait. So advantage. That's a miss. Miss. Boo advantage. Miss. Boo advantage. Come on now. Miss. Oh my gosh. Gosh. Even with the advantages, I'm going to use my last Unleash our Carnation because what a waste of advantage. What a shame. What a shame. That's, uh, that's okay. No. Wow. Four whiffs with advantage. Okay. Anything just, else? No, I'll just sulk in shame. Sure. You and me both. This one's going to move up to you, Silas. <clears throat> oh, oh I forgot. God. I forgot. My bad. Oh. <laughs> 17 to hit. That's going to be a miss. Misses. That one's gone. That one's gone. Bjorn, you fall to the ground. Okay. Uh, 14 fall damage, but you have your... Take seven. Take right. seven. Uh, and then... Does he fall on top of the bad guy and also deal damage? Oh, he him? does. That is a good yeah. reminder. <laughs> That's pretty fun. <laughs> that was a good lineup. So, yeah, that one, bad guy takes uh, 14 fall damage. That's free damage right there. It's free damage. It's ass damage. Yeah. Okay. Real estate. Uh, Levi, you're up. Okay. I'm going to pull the knight's knife out of my shoulder. And I'm going to attack the now prone uh, dude on the ground. Yeah. So does 22 hit? Yeah. Um, what weapon are you using? Uh, yeah, uh, that's the Rakdos right knife. Yep, that's a hit. 
Uh, let's see. Damage normal. So that'll do uh, two piercing. Nine. I'm not sure what all the rest of those numbers are, unfortunately. It's it's, a, it's 11 piercing because the six, two, and one are, are the modifiers. Ah, okay. Okay. So it's two plus the six plus two plus one. So it's 11 piercing. And then the nine is the... Uh, is the uh, necrotic. Okay. You do. Oh, but right. it has to be attuned in order for you to use the necrotic damage on it, I think. Oh, that is true. That is true. So I think okay. you would just do the 11 piercing. That's All better right. anyway. That's actually that's, really that's useful. For the best. Because you, you don't want to heal them. You don't want to heal them. <laughs> exactly. Okay. That's awesome. Um, then I'm going to try to stab him with it again. Sure. 28? Yeah, that's 28. it. You stab it with your steely knife, but can you kill the beast? Uh, three um, so That'll plus be 12 six. piercing. 12? Yeah, 12 piercing. Okay. Anything else? Uh, no, I think, uh, I think that'll do it. All right. Bjorn, you're laying on the ground. Next to this dude who's sure. also laying on the ground. Is my axe nearby? Yeah, it's right there. I'll say you yeah, can, right. if you use your movement, you can stand and pick up your axe. Yeah, I do that, and I'll attack this guy. Sure. And now he's prone. He is prone. Which yep. means that still you have advantage. Oh my god. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Do that critical, critical damage. Finish him. All right. Here we go. Oh, actually, I do a lot more damage on a crit now yeah. that I'm thinking about it. Nice. Uh, yeah, I don't even know if it'll add it to it. So let me, let me see how this works yeah. out. It hopefully yeah. does. Most of it's pretty good about that. It, yeah, it, critical, it did yeah. the 48. It did not add all my extra. Okay, okay hold on. So what? it 28. did forty-eight for you. It rolled four. That's just regular. Other? Oh, it did. He's it's, got. Or do you have other damage on top of that? Normally, you would do two d eight, but you got two right. Extra. So I get oh, two okay. extra. Right. Yeah. So he did forty-eight. So there you go. Twenty-eight points of damage. Okay. Still up. Uh, now my second attack on him. Yeah. Yeah. Get him. Okay. Regular hit. Yeah, that that's definitely oh a hit. God. I mean, Bjorn doesn't have a plus sixty-five, but it feels close to it. it <laughs> um, still up. Okay. Uh, well, let's see. I don't want to do the lightning bolt on him again. I saw what happened last time. So I guess I'm just basically just standing above him. Just <laughs> okay. <laughs> Everything right. but teabagging him. Yeah, oh, I'm probably doing that. Actually, I am doing that because now that I'm thinking about it, because of one of the rooms that we went through, I'm still free balling it. I'm still <laughs> nude. That's right. That's right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, right. I never, I never gave you pants. Yeah. That's it. So Silas, this one rolls up to you. All right. Take it back. Nope. That's a five to hit. Give him Ooh. the tea. <laughs> Grimgar, this one here is still engaged with you. As he will be until the end of time. That's a four to hit. Neither of us will ever touch each other. So the <laughs> Two boss. Two shirts. <sighs> the boss casts. Oh, well, if he casts, he's screwed because my oh, reaction roll yeah. is okay. another attack on him. Hey, well, <laughs> Let him cast. Slayer. Let him cast. <laughs> he doesn't know you're a mage slayer. Yeah. So uh, if he's casting, I strike first. <laughs> you strike first. Yeah. Oh God. That's oh. the mage slayer thing. Yeah. Go Bust ahead and make your chops. attack. You be quiet, mage. <laughs> <laughs> Silence, knave. Oh, oh my god! My god. <laughs> oh, give me the damage, man. That's insane. <laughs> That's perfect. When suddenly a new oh, Gallagher appears. <laughs> you 
shut your wizard mouth, Bjorn. <laughs> Best four stabs I've ever spent on that correspondence course. You oh my gosh. Take him out. And as he falls, <laughs> the two statues collapse. As well as the two remaining ghostly dudes. You see, guys, man. I did it. I finally <laughs> did it. Oh, I man. stared at him hard enough. And he's like, I'm going to die. <laughs> that, that's, my, yeah, go ahead. that's my favorite use of Mage Slayer I've seen. Which that's is amazing. so great. That's insane. Because he was getting ready to cast harm on himself for 14d6 healing. Oh, my uh, God. Uh, fuck that. Just, yeah. Well played. Uh, so here's the question. Uh, Are the topsy-turvy effects of this room still in action. Yeah. So I can just... So Sacred Flame so us to health? Every... Well, everybody gather around because I still have that poison orb. Nope. <laughs> but with some other world, we're immune to poison. We're all immune to poison. Yeah. And that yeah. poison's ah, not magical. Uh, That's true. I guess yeah. I, I could try and stab everybody with my knife over... Oh, by the way, bonus action. I... I Teleport my knife back to my hand. Give me that, Levi. Maybe. <laughs> well, I, I shouldn't lightning. play with. I can lightning I just, bolt some guys. <laughs> you guys I just, for a while. I, we I, all just I, take turns shooting spells at each other. Like, oh, this is great. Right. Yeah. This is like. I, well, I was going to say, I, I was going to say, I could try stabbing you guys with the knife over and over again, but there's a weird break even point where if I actually roll a four on the D4, mm. I actually do one point of piercing damage more than I do necrotic damage. Which so, is why I said y'all just stand most still likely. and I sacred flame you for 3d8 at a time. Is that a, is that a cantrip? Yeah. It is a cantrip. Yep. cantrip. Dude, go for it. <laughs> just Absolutely. Just, I, I mean, do you want me to act? <laughs> I'm, I'm the still best fairly healthy. In the world. Just everybody like, T-pose. I can, no I can see like things. we've got a couple people that are a little hurt. <laughs> I've still got over 100 hit points, so I'll volunteer to be the test subject just in case. So, okay. yeah, I'll tell you this. It does heal. Mm -hmm. All right. So, oh, my God. That's so cheap. It's so beautiful. So if you all take the time to just let Dan. I think this is our long rest room right here. Dan, yes. Dan's like, hold on a so, second. Get wiping so it down. Give me a second. Yeah. Everybody's just like bunched up in the corner while Dan is just like, Hadouken, over and over again, just pinning them against the wall. I've oh my never God. felt more satisfied in my entire life. Oh, that's so beautiful. <laughs> you're, you're like, I never get to do this. That's that's a great idea. Uh, and I'll tell you what, search in the dude. Um, he has on him a ring of lightning resistance, and that's pretty much all he's got on him. It's still pretty pimpy. Anything else of note at this altar or anything? This strange altar, as you approach it, starts you. It intensifies a strange feeling, almost like it seems to be emanating from this altar. Mm. Ah, uh, we have, have the altar to thank. Altar. No, I, I, leave it. Leave it. We can always come back. <laughs> but there <laughs> might be the last shard in the altar. If there's anything oh. like the orb. You know, mm. the crystal. What was the, where's the, I got to pull it up. Where, where was our poem? It was. Uh, it's as safe as can be hidden behind the reverse of a party. So dead guys mm. in a party. Or stuck fast as this shard, removing it is torturously hard. One of the two. Well, if somebody wants to take a hammer and just go to town on this altar, I guess. Well, I'll, I'll like, just cast yeah. an ending on it because that's a cantrip. Oh, there you oh, go. Oh, that's amazing. I love, I love the idea of doing reverse mending. It's so yeah. good. So, yeah, if you take the time casting your your mending, you destroy the altar. Sadly, there's nothing inside of it. Oh. Pudge. Well, at least we got all of our reverse healing done first. Yeah. 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 <laughs> this... I, I do agree. This might not be a bad room to do the long rest because I do. You've got to go through a lot to get here. We're we're way past time, and I really want to yeah. wrap this up because we're way past. But 
Does anyone want to search this room for any, you know, hidden doors or anything? Absolutely. Yeah. Perception tests. I can't imagine this room being here with nothing more than this in it. Well, somebody okay, got that so I go through the quickening oh, like wow. the Highlander. Okay, <laughs> Levi, you knock it out of the park. Oh, we all ruled well. You find yeah. a stone behind the altar that's kind of strange, and when you push it, a hidden door behind the altar opens up. You all have completed level one. Hooray! Yay! Yay! And we all leveled up again to 60. No. 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 <laughs> it was okay. worth a try. <laughs> it was worth a try. It was denied. That's where we're ending it for tonight. We'll pick back up, moving into level two, two weeks from tonight. I honestly, I didn't think we were going to get there, but we did it. So next session, we're starting on level two. Yeah! Hopefully okay. level two will go by a little quicker. I was planning this a session per level, and it's ended up being three all three of those sessions level. just for the first level. We're, I mean, so it's we kind of a positive. <laughs> we're, we're team beef, so like we will hammer down an encounter, but with traps and riddles. Yeah. Smart things. Yeah. <laughs> There's... A distinct lack of the yeah. smarts. <laughs> monsters, yeah. let's stab right ourselves. Here. Then All we'll right. kill them. That's it. Uh, Bert, you got any plugs for us? Uh, got some Gamma World 2nd Edition going on in the stream, twitch.tv slash steamstealmurder. This Sunday, Tuesday is 1st Edition Dungeons & Dragons. And Friday is BX Dungeons & Dragons. Check out the podcast at Blue Magic, B-L-U-M-A-G-I-K.com. There we go. Okay, uh, the rest of us, Defenders of Cobalt, um, tomorrow night, 9 p.m. Central on Defenders. Uh, we'll be running some 5th edition, Ghosts of Salt Marsh. Alex will be running that. Um, Monday night, you can catch Jeremy and I, I think. Are we doing Alien on Monday? Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, I think so. I couldn't remember. So Monday night over on twitch.tv slash the lollygaggers, Jeff's running us through some alien. Uh, I come back this Wednesday. I'll go this Wednesday on Defenders. We've got some Pathfinder second edition. You can catch pretty much everyone here except for Eddie on that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thursday night, <laughs> 9 p.m. Central. Once again on Defenders, Watercolors and Warriors, our Ghibli inspired fifth ed campaign. Uh, they made it to the Feywild, so things are going to get crazy. Uh, Friday, once again on Defenders, 9 p.m. Central, we're actually doing some old school essentials. Uh, JNov in the chat's running that for us, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and then next Saturday at 1 p.m. Central on Defenders, we're doing uh, Forbidden Lands. So we got a crazy week for you all to watch lots of good stuff. Uh... I don't know. That's all I got. And some crap, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, thanks, everyone, for watching. Uh, Crypt of the Devil Itch. We'll catch you all later. Deuces. Night, guys. Uh